Hi everyone, this is Veronica and today we are going to talk about swine flu because this is the season in North India when the swine flu peaks up, it is on the peak and usually we confuse it with heavy cold that we should not do because swine flu can even result in death and severe infection. So today we are going to talk about swine flu only for my video updates. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. The PDF of this lecture will be uploaded on our website. So this is a channel study IQ. If you are preparing for any government exam, our pen drive and tablet courses are also available. For additional information, you can call on these numbers that are given on the screen or you can visit our website also. So these are the courses that we have. For any additional information, you can contact us. Now, what is the relevance of this topic at objective level? What is swine flu symptoms? You should know because this is the time when we are having a lot of cases reported and subjective level preventive measures against H1N virus. What is this virus? What are the symptoms preventions uh, database? You should know about that. So now let's start. Why suddenly it is in news? Because uh, the death of the long ailing former union minister George Fernandez after he contracted swine flu has triggered concern over infection of H1N1 virus. So the name swine flu has persisted even though virus has long bypassed the need for swine as an intermediate carrier. The reference to swine comes from 2009 as you know uh, here I've written that it comes from 2009 when the world saw a particularly severe outbreak uh, that the World Health Organization labeled as pandemic. So the infection is simply called seasonal flu in medical parlance now including the government of India's integrated disease Sur surveillance program. The centers of disease control prevention that are known as CDC the leading national public health institute of the u.s defines swine flu that it is basically a respiratory disease of pigs caused by type a influenza viruses that regularly cause outbreaks of influenza in pigs and influenza viruses that commonly circulate in swine are called swine influenza viruses like human influenza you might have heard about there are different subtypes and strains of swine influenza viruses too so now here we'll discuss about certain data that according to this data compiled by NCDC that is National Center for Disease Control under the Ministry of Health and Fa uh, Family Welfare there have been 4571 cases of swine flu and 169 deaths already from the diseases across the country this year so this year only till 27th January so many cases have been reported and there are deaths reported too so this is really serious so India is witnessing a new rise in the number of cases and deaths due to swine flu Gujarat is the worst affected followed by Rajasthan uh, so here I'll talk to, uh, I would like to talk more about this data as of now there is higher rate of infection than the last several years so last several years that uh, i'll talk about 2018 2017 2016 2015 okay so in 2018 last year around 14,992 cases were reported and in 17 there were 38,811 cases were reported uh in 2016, there were 1,786 cases that were reported quite lesser. And in 2015, there were around 42,592 cases were reported. And um, in these cases, around 1,100 deaths in this year, 2,200 deaths in 17, and 265 deaths in 16. And in 15, there were around 2,990 deaths. So this is the data to tell you the save, uh, the serious nature of swine flu. So H1N1 typically spikes between January and March. That is why I'm making this video today on uh, 17th uh, 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 February, right? So you should know that uh, this year uh, Jan from January and March, this is the peak season for uh, swine flu. It resurfaces during the monsoon and last until after the rains also. Uh, however, some cases are reported around the year, which is why the World Health Organization calls for people to get vaccinated against the flu. So that is why this discussing this data is important for the awareness of people. Now you know about it, you can tell people. We'll discuss the preventive measures also. So when now we talk about swine flu influenza, that is SIV or swine origin influenza virus, it is a strain of influenza family only of viruses that is endemic in pigs, but 
although pig is not anymore a uh, intermediary carrier carrier now it can uh, pass from one person to person other person also uh so swine influenza also call, called as pig influenza or hog flu also it is a infection that is caused by one of the several types of swine influenza viruses uh it is an ortho, ortho mixo virus you should know that it contains glyco proteins hemagglutinin and neuraminidase so there are different functions it helps the virus uh to propagate in our body uh, this uh, neura uh, neuraminidase is a type of glycoside hydrolase enzyme it helps to move the virus particles through the infected cell and assist in budding from the host cell so this is about the swine flu so what are the risk factors here see all the people are at risk but there are certain groups which are which are more prone to the swine flu this is totally based on the observation so the individuals having any other respiratory condition suppose if somebody is having pneumonia they are more at a risk for swine flu there are pregnant women is at higher risk people su- suffering from chronic diseases like heart disease or diabetes they are at more risk people more than 65 years of age and children younger than 2 years so these risk groups have been identified based on observation and doesn't imply that you have swine flu if you have flu like symptoms and belong to any of these above risk groups but one should seek necessary medical care if you have flu symptoms so now in this slide we will talk about that somewhere we feel that india has not learned any lessons from the 2015 h1 epidemic why i am saying that because despite the first point if i take despite the high numbers there is no system in place to release data periodically and frequently if you want to compare this with the regular updates provided by us centers in disease control and prevention especially during an epidemic and then there is a uh, there has also been a failure on the part of governments to spread awareness about pre- prevention strategies and then uptake of influenza vaccination by people especially by those belonging to the high risk category that i just explained you has been extremely poor with only around 10000 to 12000 doses of h1 h1 n1 virus uh, vaccine being sold in the last 6 months so since 2009 pandemic h1 n1 has become a seasonal flu virus strain in india even when temperature soars during the summer months so vaccination of health care workers and and people in high risk category is the only way to reduce this toll that we should remember that the people who are at higher risk groups and the healthcare workers should be given the vaccines now we'll talk about some urgent measures in two categories here what should be the treatment what is the prevention so we talk about treatment once the patient is tested positive for swine flu then we should not wait treatment needs to be initiated immediately so according to NICD that is your National Institute of Communicable Disease swine flu can be completely treated if it is diagnosed at a very early stage so they are giving you antiviral medicines like uh, Tamiflu fluvir zanamivir okay so as per this NICD the medicine should be administered within 48 hours for the first symptom so the drugs work with by inhibiting the ability of virus to release progeny virus particles and if we talk about prevention so just like any other influenza virus h1n1 infection can be prevented by practicing some basic hygiene so what is the basic hygiene like you should wear masks always uh, wear a proper surgical mask during flu season because number of cases shoots up during summers and monsoon seasons and always cover your face while coughing or sneezing and ensure others around you also follow the same practice especially if they are down with cold so always wash your hands okay wash you should always wash your hands before and after eating particularly after returning from public place then remember the virus can also spread through droplets that have settled on the surface so avoid touching them with uh, if you are around a person who has flu like symptoms then you should avoid visiting unhygienic places or using public restrooms so even if you develop flu like system uh, symptoms or even you feel sick stay at home take enough rest keep keeping away from others to prevent the spread of infection so that is a preventive measure and uh, at last drinking lots of warm water and fluids wash off the virus into the stomach where they can not survive so drink a lot of water and tell others these preventive measures too 
so now we'll talk about the way forward so just see there are a range of administrative policies and practices that can be used to minimize influenza exposure before arrival upon arrival and throughout the duration of visit to the healthcare setting but here uh, information that could be collected from different surveys and surveillances could be used but uh, what we need to do if we talk from the vaccine point of view so after mutation the newer strain emerges stronger than the earlier strain so more research is needed to fully understand the uh, epidemiology of h1n1 caused by the michigan strain and, or who may be more vulnerable also the composition of the swine flu vaccine will require changes as per who recommendation also and if i talk about database the numbers in the official report do not reflect the true reality this is because it is not mandatory for the private hospitals to disclose all the deaths and the people affected to the government's database so there is a need for a system to record and release the actual number of cases for making appropriate response so that is important and prevention i have already talked uh, about that being a communicable disease swine flu can be uh, can best be prevented with awareness generation by governments okay and at last by diagnosing so sufficient lab facilities to diagnose h1n1 cases among both hospitalized and non hospitalized population is essential so in the end i would say the government should do everything possible to take both preventive and curative measures to fight the swine flu and you as an aware uh, citizen responsible citizens like whoever is watching this lecture right now you can tell the people around you what are the preventive measures that they should follow or for the treatment right so if you have any queries you can contact me here is my uh, contact on the social networks so pdf the share from the website i will share on the telegram channel or on facebook thank you